So hello and welcome back to Coin Collecting 101. My name is Glenn and today, well, I purchased this coin lot for I think about $18 and I want to know if uh, I've actually done a good thing. So, first of all, all up, I think I just basically will get my money back if I sell these again. But, we need to go through them and just see if uh, any of these are worth, you know, over the $18 that I actually purchased this coin lot for. So the first three we're going to go through is, so the first one is this 50 pence. So we'll go through the ones that are in circulation still. So that's the UK 50 pence coin, pretty common. Uh, 997, I think the mintage was about 400 million. So... As this coin, it's slightly off center, so you can see the double rim, which is probably pretty common for UK 50 pence. Uh, I don't actively collect 50 pence coins, but based on Australian and Hong Kong coins, they doubling of the rim is actually quite common. Uh, I would say that this one's still face value, which in Australia is about a dollar. In the UK 50 pence, it has Britannia, so these ones stopped being minted in 2008 and they were replaced with the shield version. So uh, part of the actual shield. And currently these have been changed in design. And Britannia is on the two pound coin. Which also the two pound coin Britannia is still not that common. Slowly minted. But the difference in this Britannia is that we have the UK flag on the shield so the britannia actually originates in the romans so the roman they issued bronze coins for britannia i can't remember when but maybe i would do a video about the origination of britannia later so that one's not really worth much it's only worth keeping if it's a space filler and also if uh you like britannia coins Okay, the next coin is from Barbados. So, yes, small island is their own currency. Our first year of issue, 1973, it replaced the East Caribbean dollar. And this one's uh, aluminium bronze. And uh, I don't know the mintage value. I need to look at numerous stuff for that. So, the mintage of this coin is 4 million. And the bird pictured that you can see here is. Uh, a gull, so a laughing gull, which the Australian silver gull and the Pacific gull. So this actually looks like quite a large bird based on the bill compared to the actual size of the actual animal. And the exchange rate's about pretty much 8 to 10 cents for that. So if you're going to sell it, I would sell as a group because it's in pretty low grade. Okay, the next coin we have is... The current coin of Nicaragua. So you turn it over. Obviously, this is coin rotated. Republic of Nicaragua, Central America. So Nicaragua and Costa Rica have Central America, which is I don't know why. You can just look at it on the internet these days. And it has five volcanoes, it has a Phrygian cap uh, with radiation. So Electromagnetic radiation, there's a pyramid for conspiracies out there. Uh, they would actually love this coin. So, this is from the Fur Cordoba. So, the first Cordoba was issued in 1912 to 1987. And before that, they had uh, the Spanish and the pesos, which didn't suffer from hyperinflation, they just wanted to make the Currency more independent of uh, European influence. 1988, 90 second Cordoba and third Cordoba was introduced in 91. So this is not the smallest coin currently in circulation. That will be the 10 centavos. So you've got 10 centavos, 25 centavos, uh, 50 centavos. Then we have this one. The one Cordoba, it's 2002, so this is a nickel-plated steel. 
the current coin minting is just a steel coin, but this is still in circulation. It has a value of about four cents. And not really a high value coin, so that's why I went steel to save more money. Uh, and the earlier coin was also nickel plated steel. So I'd say they got removed the nickel because it's high value. So that one, yeah, probably about a dollar or two. Okay. Then we have the Tonga coin. So this one has a mintage of, depending on the date, 1975, 75,000. So it's a low mint coin, but for Tongan coins, 75,000 was pretty not standard mintage at the time. Even in the 90s, the 20 Sanity coin had a mintage of, you know, just a few hundred thousand. But this one is interesting because it's got bees. And they're actually coming out of the beehive and going around in a circle. So they're actually looking for you. And we have a script, 20 Sanity. So this no longer in circulation. They reduce the size of the coins. Tupu Alufu is here. Hello, how are you going? FAO is here to save the day. And also, uh, yeah, this coin is probably worth about five bucks. Then we have a Palestinian coin. Now for people who say Palestine doesn't exist, well, yes it does. There you go. Evidence that Palestine exists. Uh, and usually supporters of Israel. But not all supporters of Israel say that Palestine doesn't exist, they're just the jerks they do. Okay, so 1942 had a mintage about 4 million. And the date below is... So here's a good analogy. People think that this is a Western numbering system, but it's not. This is the East, uh, West African, uh, West Arabic, this is the East Arabic. So both of these were invented by the Arabs. This was mainly used in North Africa. So that's why a lot of Moroccan coins use this numbering system. And this was used mainly in the Arabian Peninsula and the Middle East. So and then you've got Arabic and Hebrew. And these two scripts are both derived from Phoenician, as well as the Latin one, derived from Phoenician via Etruscan and Etruscan come from the Greek and these two are more derived from uh, uh, the Punic system so Phoenicia and that so they're all pretty much the same derived from the same system yeah so this one probably about five dollars I would say so you're not in high grade okay then yeah, okay, so this is the one I wanted to keep. A okay, five sol de oro. So that means that's the currency souls. That just means gold. So five gold souls. Chinko is just the denomination. And here we have probably an Inca cup. It looks like a cup. And the design does look like an Inca. But it could also be based on one of the early civilizations because Peru has had civilizations. For quite a few thousand years, and got two mint marks. So I'm saying this is probably minted in France, could be Belgium or the Netherlands. And on the back, we have the coat of arms 1969, first year of issue. I think the mint is about 10 million. Yeah, it's only about a few dollars, three or four dollars for this coin. Uh, but that one's one I wanted to make the collection. And then we have a Saudi coin. So this is 1356, which is a 1936 coin. Uh, now that Saudi's first issue coins in 19, I think 1924. And this is a Von Gersh. So originally the real at this time was denominated in 22 Gersh. Obviously that doesn't make sense. But in 1960 they re-denominated to one real equals 20 gersh and so this was equivalent to five halala so when they demonet uh, decimalized in 
1973, I believe, and they issued coins. Although they issued a one halala coin in 1963. Yeah, the dates are subjective. I can't remember off my head, and I'm not going to look it up. Uh, so this coin is missing the actual date palms in the center. Uh, and also has just has the monarch's name around it and the actual name of the country. And if you look at the script, so this is the bottom of the script here, and this is the bottom of the script up there. If you know, just the, even though I can't read it, you can actually pick out the different letters that are in Arabic as well. So this is the way it should look when you actually rotate it. So this is a coin rotator coin and it does looks a bit yeah it's, it's a a little bit rotated itself so when you turn it around it should actually face that way but it's not so it's rotated about 11 o'clock and you know that one's probably worth about 10 bucks the last one we have is the oldest one here it's a half anna largest bronze coin Issued by East India Company for India. And this is a 1935. I think there's 95 million of these minted. So not a common, not an uncommon coin. So this is a coat of arms of the East India Company. And it's well circulated. I'll put it, condition is fine. Probably even very good. So I would say about 5 to 10 bucks for that. And this is the highest base metal coin they issued in India. They didn't issue a one anna coin because that would be quite a large bronze coin. So this is actually the size of a penny. So here's the penny. Yeah, size of a penny at the time. And so the bronze coin would actually have to be larger. And they did issue a silver coin. So the silver coin is roughly about the size of this and to these 10 cents. So if they wanted to issue a one enna, it would have actually had to be bigger this coin or smaller than that. Or they could have actually mixed these two metals together and made a coin that's in between the actual size. But that gets a bit more complicated. Anyway, I would say, you know, being conservative, 5, 10, 15... Yeah, probably 20. Yeah, probably just make your money back. But these three, if I was to resell, I'd just put them in coin lots and sell them as a coin uh, bulk lot because they're not really worth selling by themselves. Anyway, thank you very much and have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Thank you and goodbye.